And it reads, while they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body. Verse 27, then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, drink from it all of you. This is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many for the forgiveness sins of sins. I want to talk for a moment for a thought, if you will, or as a outburst. Thank God for the blood. Thank God for, for the blood. Father, we thank you for this preach moment and this preach hour. Pray now that you will circumcise the ears of your people, that you will soften their hearts to receive this their word that you have given upon us. Now I pray, Father, that it will encourage, push, motivate, heal, deliver, set free what it has commanded to do, that it shall not, it will not return to you born, but it shall flourish and manifest within that sight. We thank you so much, Father, for all that you are doing. Now I pray, Father, that you will allow this word to be acceptable in your sight. For you are my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name I do pray. Everybody believe that? Say amen. amen. Take me to, take me to. Begin to gather this word for this preach moment as we slowly approach the commemoration and the celebration of communion of our Lord's body, blood, shed, death, and crucifixion and his resurrection. I begin to look at this because I had to get some blood work done. This past Monday, Tuesday, I believe, began to ask the nurse that was taking the blood questions about the blood. She begins to explain to me what this tube of blood signified and what purpose that it held. Then she also showed me the other cube to show me that what this particular blood would do and what it would recognize according to what needs to be done or what needs to be passed. Matthew, y'all know him. Tax collector. Better known as uh, one of the alphabet boys. The IRS. He gives the insight of what we know as the last supper. Jesus, who would soon be the final Passover lamb. He uh, ate the traditional Passover meal with his disciples in the upper room of a house in Jerusalem. The Passover took place on one night and at one meal. But the Feast of the Unleavened Bread, which was celebrated with it, continued for a week. During the meal, they partook of the bread and the wine, which would be the elements of future communion celebrations such as today. Each name we use for this sacrament brings out a different dimensions to it. It is the Lord's Supper because it commemorates the Passover meal Jesus ate with his disciples. It is here that it is thanksgiving, if you will. That in it we thank God for Christ's work for us. 
It is communion because through it we commune with God and with other believers. As we eat bread and drink the wine, we should be quietly reflective as well recall Jesus' death and his promise to us being grateful for God's wonderful gift to us. Thank God for the blood. In order for one to be thankful, they have to know what they are thankful for. Not only do they have to know what they are thankful for, we have to understand the meaning and the clarity of why they are thankful. Which means once you understand uh, your uh, understand what one thing does and its purpose, your gratitude is shown sincerely rather than as a fad or a popular statement. Thank God for the blood. We know that through the hymn writers and through the scripture writers that the blood uh, saved. <laughs> the blood saved me. Uh, the blood healed me. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Nothing but the blood. And, and the most popular uh, one that I like is uh, that the blood will never lose its power. Well, what is the blood, you might ask? I'm glad you asked. What is the significance of the blood? I'm, I'm glad you asked because I want to share it with you. What is the importance of the blood? I'm glad you asked. I'm trying to get there. Why does the, does the blood work? Well, I'm glad you asked. In order to be thankful for the blood, you have to know what the blood is, what the blood does in the physical realm as well as the spiritual realm. Quite frankly, it's not much, much different. Not much different. The blood is, as my scholars in Thursday night Bible study, TBS, would put it, it is a liquid. Uh, one of my scholars said this, that uh, it is life force. Yeah. I love that one because uh, it began to put some power behind the blood. Saying that the blood is life force. Which I like it because you need the blood in order to live. Yeah. If you lose a certain amount of blood, you can lose your life. Yeah. We was uh, watching the movie Taken Two, and uh, the man cut uh, 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 the, the man's wife's neck. And he uh, took her and he turned her over so that the blood would drip out. And she would lose consciousness and oxygen in her brain, which she would die within the next 30 minutes. But I, I thank God for understanding of the blood <laughs> and how the blood works. Because he uh, forcefully, by his understanding and knowledge of the blood, he begins to take force into getting out of the captivity of the change that he was in to save his wife. So that uh, she would not die. By losing some blood. Wow. Uh, help me where you're going, Pastor. Well, which I, I begin to look at this. Uh, not only is, is it defined as a red liquid, uh, but the blood is uh, that liquid that circulates in the arteries and the veins of the vertebrate, carrying oxygen to and carbon dioxide from the tissues. Yes. The blood that gives me strength from day to day. It's made up of four components. Plasma is one of them. Plasma is a mixture of water, sugar, fat, protein, uh, and calcium salts. It is also contains many chemicals that help form the blood clots necessary to stop bleeding. More than 92% of plasma is water. Thank God for the water. That if I drink of his water, I shall never thirst again. Amen. Red blood cells, it, it contains a special protein called hemoglobin. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Which carries the oxygen we inhale or with our lungs to all of the parts of our bodies. It then returns carbon dioxide from our body to our lungs so we can exhale. Hemoglobin. It's also responsible for waking the red blood cells red. We have so many red blood cells that our blood itself appears red even though it contains more than red blood cells. White blood cells, number three, are clear round cells that are bigger 
than red blood cells. White blood cells produces proteins called antibodies that help our bodies fight off infections caused by bacteria, viruses, and foreign proteins. Lastly, but not least, uh, it is platelets. Platelets aren't really cells at all. They are just fragments of cells, pieces. When we are injured, platelets gather at the site of the injury and stick to the edge of the wound. 